Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how to paint a Lincoln townhouse in line and wash. So between Christmas and New Year, we went to visit family and they live fairly near Lincoln. So we went there for a day and had a look around and it's a beautiful place. Really interesting, lots and lots of different styles of architecture. So I got lots of photos while I was there and I love taking uh, photos that are kind of like dark and moody and from interesting angles. And I really like macro photography as well. And I've popped them up on my photography Instagram, which is, is just for my personal hobby of photography and like the dark and moody shots that I like to take. But I also took lots of photos while I was there of places that I thought would be interesting to paint. So I've got a few here, uh, some of like individual buildings and then some like street scenes as well. But I think I'll leave the street scenes for another day and just focus on one building for today. So in the run up to Christmas, I took on a number of house portrait commissions and I realised that I was working in a slightly different way when I took on the commissions. So I thought it'd be interesting to do one today that's kind of using that same style and just kind of showing you what the differences are. So when I was working on commissions, people would send me photos of their houses that they wanted me to paint. And I always started by editing them uh, just to bring out the details in the photos and to straighten them up a little bit if they were a bit wonky um, and or if the perspective is a bit off, which it often can be in a photo. So that's what I've done with these photos that I took of Lincoln as well. They're all kind of straightened up and I've kind of lightened them to bring out the uh, the details in the shadow areas and that kind of thing. And then I've printed each one out at the size that I want to paint it. So when I'm working on a sketch just for myself, I, I don't mind if it, you know, if it doesn't quite have the right proportions or, you know, if there's a window in the wrong place or if I draw the door on the wrong side or something like that. It doesn't matter. But if I'm doing it as a commission for somebody, then, and especially if it's their house that they know well, I want to get it right. So for this, I'm using ruler and, uh, and measuring and then making sure I've got the proportions right on the page. So I'm happy to use a ruler for this because I want the proportions to be right. And there are things that you notice when you really look at a building. And with this building in particular, you'd think that all of the windows would be evenly spaced out. But when I really look at the picture and then when I'm measuring, I can see that the middle window isn't right in the middle. It's slightly off to one side. And then I look a little bit closer and I see that actually two of the windows have got a bigger gap between them than some of the others. So spending a little bit of time kind of carefully reviewing it and doing some measuring helps me to get those little quirks right. But then once I've got that pencil structure in, I'm going to put my ruler to one side because if I used a ruler with a pen, I think I'd lose a lot of the character and interest that comes with this being a, a drawing. So I'm not going to use a ruler to do the pen lines, uh, only as a, a guideline that I put underneath, like a structure that I make underneath in pencil. So when I've marked in the basics with the pencil, including where all of the windows go and uh, and even some of the details like the, the telephone box, then I'll go in with pen. And I'm using a 0.3 fine liner. It doesn't really matter the brand. I like these Unipin ones, but uh, but as long as it's a waterproof pen, it's absolutely fine. And then I'm just starting at the top left and I'm going to work across and I'm going to put in some of the detail at the top of the building. So you can choose whether you want to just do uh, the big shapes first and then come back and add the detail in. I'm adding in a couple of lines where I can see there's a little bit of a, like an overhanging bit of stone or something like that. So yeah, so sometimes I'm doing a single line, sometimes I'm doing a double line, and then I'll I'll come back later and do a little bit more. And 
And then I'm putting in the chimneys. Um, so I'm only including the chimneys on the right and on the middle of the building. There are some chimneys on the left as well, but they're actually on the building next door, I think. So I'm not going to include those. So these chimneys on the right are the only place in the building where the perspective becomes really obvious, where the uh, there's a really sharp angle as the kind of the side of the chimney kind of falls away from you. And then there's just two little chimneys, slightly offset, sort of in the middle, but not really, uh, that you can see above the the parapet bit at the top. Now I'm going through and marking in where all the windows go. And uh, to start with, I'm just putting in one line for the outside of the windows and a little curved line on the top of each. And then I can start adding some of the more interesting bits of this building. So yeah, so down the down the right and left hand side of the building are these kind of quite prominent stones. Um, so I want to get these in and I want to, I'm not too concerned about getting exactly the right number, but I want it to be kind of roughly there. So I am actually counting how many stones you get in each kind of level. And if I'm off by one, that's fine. But if I, as long as I get it roughly right, then I'll be happy. Another nice feature of this building is the fact that each of the windows has got a little bit of decorative stone and some curving brickwork above it as well. So I'm going to put those in. And then the rest of the decorative stonework. There are some really quite fancy bits around both of these doors. Get some nice curved lines. It's it's quite tricky getting the curve nice and accurate. So if you need to practice a couple of times with pencil before you go in with pen, then uh, that can be useful. And then steps, there's one more step on the right because the street slopes down a little bit. And now I'm going back to the top and adding the little decorative pillars at the top. These are not terribly intricate, but they've got a little curve to them. So I make each one with a little pair of like S-shaped curves. Now I go back over the windows and I start putting the detail in. Every time I do windows, I do them slightly differently and it depends on how big they are really. So if I'm doing a big building that's got lots of windows, then actually the detail in the windows is going to be quite minimal. The bigger the windows are in the drawing, so if I'm doing like quite a small house the same size, you'd see more detail in the window. This one's got lovely sash windows. I'm going to draw the outline of the top sash and then the outline of the bottom sash. But then for the bars in between them, I'm just going to draw horizontal and vertical bars. And then in the kind of the basement level, right to the right of the building, you can just see the top of another window, which it looks like it's kind of half submerged in the pavement. So I, I make sure to get that in because that's really interesting. And then in the centre one, you can't actually see a window at all, but you can see some, some of the curved brickwork that would be like the lintel above a window. 
So that's going in too. And then the doors. Now, these doors have got lovely Christmas wreaths on them, but seeing as this is after Christmas, I don't want to kind of date the picture. So I'm just going to do the doors as they would be without a wreath. And then I really like putting in little extra bits of uh, street furniture and signs and things like that. And I love this red telephone box. So that's going in too. Even if it's kind of, it's, it's going to stand out a little way from the building and it may be a little bit distracting, but I like it. So it's happening. And finally, I just like to add a little line at the bottom just to indicate where the, the edge of the pavement is. So once I'm happy with the ink drawing, I can rub away my pencil lines and then I just give it a once over and just check that I haven't missed anything. So now it's time for paint. And my technique for painting these is basically to try and match the colours as best I can and then paint in each area with a flat wash. So I'm going to start with bricks. And I pick the closest colour to the brick colour, which in my case is burnt sienna. And then I add little bits of other colours just to just to tint it and to play with it a little bit. I think it could do with being a little warmer, so I've added a little bit of red. But then that makes a really kind of bright, vibrant colour. And that's not quite right for a dreary English winter afternoon. So. Uh, just add a little bit of ultramarine into it and that just kind of calms it down. I add quite a bit of water and then I try and mix up enough so that I can do the whole building. Uh, not in one go because actually it's in different sections but um, enough so that I don't have to mix up uh, any more because it's really hard to kind of get exactly the right colour the second time you mix it up. For this, as I did with my house portrait commissions, I'm using a really quite small paintbrush. I found that um, if I wanted to be really precise in some areas, then having a smaller brush uh, gave me a lot more control. So this one's a number four. So I'm working fairly quickly, painting around all of the windows, I'm trying to make sure that I don't leave any edges to dry because I don't want any hard lines in there. And occasionally, I'll just change the colour a little bit. Um, so I'll add a little bit more blue in some places, maybe a little bit more red in others. And uh, just so that you get a slightly different tone across different areas of the building. And that I think it just makes it look a bit more natural, like it's a bit dirty in some places. So then when my brick colour is all on and it's all dry, I start to add in the stonework. And I like to use raw umber as the kind of stone colour. And actually I don't add anything into it at this point. It's just as it comes out of the, out of the pan. I start uh, maybe a little dark, so I can use paper towel, block that off, and uh, add a little bit more water into the mix.
while my stonework is drying a little, I'm going to just use some Windsor Red and paint in that telephone box. Now the doors and windows on this building are a kind of greyish bluey green colour. Uh, the doors are slightly darker than the windows. So I'm going to, um, I've got some green on my palette already, so I'm going to um, play with that a little bit, maybe add a little bit of blue into it and just try and get a nice kind of bluey green colour for the doors. I've got those nice brick bits above the window as well and I want to kind of differentiate them a little bit from the brick surrounds and they're not really that much different in colour but I'm going to make them a little bit darker just by kind of not putting as much water in the wash but it's exactly the same kind of mix of, uh, of brick colour that I'm using here. Now I want the uh, the window colour and it's a kind of, it's a similar colour to the doors but slightly more pastel-y. Um, so I'm actually mixing in some buff titanium with the bluey green that I'd already mixed up. Uh, this is uh, something that I use quite a lot just to make something look that kind of chalky colour. Um, you can hardly tell when I paint in the, the window frames. But I think if I just left them white, they would have looked quite stark. So I like to just add a little bit of colour onto them, just to, just to knock them back a little bit and they'll make them blend in with the rest of the building. Now the bottom pan of my palette, I've got mixed up something that I think of as just a kind of generic shadow colour and it's a mix of ultramarine and burnt umber and sometimes I make it a little bit cooler by adding more ultramarine and sometimes I make it a little bit warmer by adding more burnt umber depending on the time of day, what the building looks like or what I'm feeling at the minute. So this one's got a bit more blue in it so it's quite cool colour. So firstly the window panes on the telephone box, the roof tiles that you can just see behind the uh, the balustrade bits at the, at the top. Um, so yeah, that just gets a few dabs of that kind of cool grey colour. And then I'm going to use it to paint in all of the window panes on the building as well. So most of the windows are quite dark, but some of them you can see some reflections on. So where you can see that, I'm just going in with a paper towel and just pressing it very gently and allowing it just to soak up some of the paint in some of the windows uh, and make it look a little bit mottled or even if you've got like a, a sharp line across it, it looks quite natural and it looks like there's a, a real reflection there. I use that same colour all the way along the base of the building just put a, a simple line of it, making sure that it touches the base of the building. And then I use the paintbrush on its side and just spread it downwards, but allowing the texture of the paper to show up a little, a little bit as well. And then at this stage, I've got all of the colour on there, but the building looks quite flat. Uh, so I go in with that shadow colour again, and anywhere that would be sticking out, I add a little line of that colour underneath. So any bits of stone that are kind of prominent, 
uh, any little ledges, and then underneath each of the windows, so underneath the top of the window and underneath the sash bar as well. So the way that you do these shadows can really change the look of your building. So this was, it was, it was quite a sunny day, but it's a, it's a winter day. So the shadows aren't all of that, all that sharp or extreme. So I'm making them quite subtle on here. But if you want a painting to look really sunny, then you make those shadows more prominent and it makes it look brighter. So painting the shadow layer is the last thing that I do. And then I just sit back and check that I've not forgotten anything. Because I seem to paint in a way that means I miss little bits. I, I missed a window here or there. I have to go back and fill it in later. So I just have to survey the whole thing and just make sure I've got everything. So if you fancy having a go at this, the reference image is up on my website and there'll be a link to it down in the description box below. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, then please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more from me, then uh, do subscribe to the channel. If you give it a go, I'd love to see it. Uh, you can post it on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. I do love seeing the work that you've made and I love the times that you share it with me. So thank you very much for that. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.